Welcome to this new episode of The Context. Today we have a fantastic opportunity to talk about the frontiers and the promise of virtual reality and augmented reality. Why? Well, this thing has been just released. You may recognize it uh, because YouTube is full of uh, in-depth uh, review videos. It is Oculus 2 um, designed and produced by Facebook. You may not have uh, expected that uh, the social network would uh, make a bid bet uh, on virtual reality, but they are. They are actually even building an entirely immersive new platform where you will not only write and read and like uh, on a flat browser, but you will actually share a digital space where your avatar, the digital representation of your body, is going to be able to mingle and talk to and listen to other people and do things together with experiences and activities that are being designed and imagined right now. Now, this is not going to be a review video and I am not going to illustrate the various parts of the visor or the controller so let me put it down. What I want to do, as usual, is to give you a context so that you can interpret the meaning and make decisions that are well informed about what is the future that uh, the things you are observing around promise and how you can incorporate them in your life, uh, in your activities, in your initiatives the businesses that you are building or running, or how can society adapt to them. Virtual reality has been around for a long time. Well, both imagined uh, by the storytellers uh, around the fire, uh, even when uh, we uh, didn't have writing. And of course, then uh, virtual reality would be nothing, but uh, anyone listening to them closing their eyes and uh, imagining with their eyes closed the worlds that the storytellers would be so skillfully designing and narrating. But what we are talking about today is a technology-mediated virtual reality. This has been originally coined by Jaron Lanier uh, in the 90s he imagined that the productivity of developers would hit a ceiling and only if they were equipped with higher degrees of uh, tools in order to improve what they needed to do, uh, they could keep up with the challenges of managing ever bigger and ever more complex tasks uh, as they were building platforms and programs and applications. That turned to be not the case. Today's developers are indeed very productive, but they are using uh, software tools that are still relying on the bi-dimensional representation of the code that they are writing. We will not go into that branch of our analysis, but the real revolution uh, in the productivity of software developers is coming from artificial intelligence, which is basically code writing itself. Instead, let's look at what it means that we can wear these uh, visors and immerse ourselves in a digital reality that substitutes some of our senses, represents a world that we can interact with. First of all, I am a big fan of alternate realities because uh, they are interesting, uh, stimulating, uh, they lead to new kinds of considerations, uh, both in play as well as in understanding the world and yourself. However, these alternate realities, in my opinion, should be as much interactive as possible. 
I am not especially fond of uh, sitting back and passively watching what is going on. It is one of the reasons, I believe, why uh, 3D, um, or, or even worse, um, 360 degree uh, videos did not have a lot of success. Because yes, you can turn your head around and um, you can decide where to watch, but after a while, uh, that becomes uh, somewhat boring. And the uh, narration of a storyline in an environment where you have the freedom of looking elsewhere becomes immensely harder for the director than not. The, where, uh, the, the diversion uh, where they can decide uh, uh, where do you look. So interaction is key. Interaction, yes, with the environment. In order to be able to manipulate objects, uh, to pick them up, uh, to change them uh, in ways that uh, the screen uh, in its flatness on one hand doesn't necessarily engender, on the other hand when it is possible it requires some kind of specialized knowledge exactly because you have to overcome the fact that you are uh, manipulating objects that are three-dimensional on a flat screen. That is why computer-aided design uh, is still something that specialists will utilize rather than anyone. But manipulating objects in a three-dimensional immersive uh, environment is very much intuitive. We do it uh, um, as uh, very young children uh, when we place uh, a cube on top of the other and then the third and the fourth and the whole thing uh, falls down and we start over giggling and happy with that elementary understanding of a three-dimensional world and its features and characteristics. And the same thing we can do in these immersive worlds. Um, maybe we'll be giggling uh, uh, less uh, uh, naively, uh, we will refrain from uh, making a fool of uh, ourselves, but uh, still the discovery process is childlike. But the interaction, importantly, is also with other people. And I think that a lot of the driver in the adoption of the type of um, devices like Oculus 2 is going to come from the possibility of being together in an immersive digital space where you can walk, still admittedly in a, uh, in a volume that is not too wide, let's say like a small room um, and you have to uh, very carefully uh, check your environment because uh, when you are in the uh, digital space you don't see your physical surroundings but still other people in their respective physical spaces as they wear the visor will join the digital space that you are also occupying and this can be magical especially if some of the parameters are changed so that whatever you are doing is analogous but doesn't try to strictly emulate what can happen in the physical world. That is why, for example, one of the first games uh, on these devices, uh, the roller coaster adventures, are so attractive because the rides can be crazy. Uh, things that could never happen in the physical world. Or one of the latest uh, uh, games allows you to collaborate and um, fight other teams uh, in absence of gravity. Many of us dream of going into space, but few of us will able to realize that for the moment. But uh, cooperating and competing in absence of gravity, well, you can start developing your intuitions about what it actually means and how do uh, big masses behave that have inertia 
even if uh, they don't have weight uh, within this game. So watch out, not only for those activities that simulate the world as is, but the digital that diverges from what we do in the physical world. An aspect that leaves me profoundly dissatisfied in uh, today's environment is the separation of experiencing and authoring. I really want the two to be in the same environment. For those of you who have uh, used uh, Second Life that has been around now for more than 10 years, you realize how powerful the experience is to be able to uh, magically create a sphere or a cube or any more complex object within the same world where your avatar is standing and hand it over to someone else or just let it fall on the grass. And that is the kind of uh, unifying experience that I believe is necessary really to make a lot of people understand the power and accessibility of these virtual reality environments. Facebook uh, is going to introduce many different tools, both uh, for the 3D version of its social network, for consumer adoption, as well as uh, office productivity opportunities to enhance collaboration, to improve the uh, ability of people to feel part of the same team even when they are remote uh, and part of a distributed team. And it will take a few years uh, before these tools become sophisticated enough for us to realize that we have started to do things that have no equivalent in the physical world and that are superior in their ability to let us achieve our goals. And that will be the moment where virtual reality devices will have arrived. The big question, of course, is what is Apple going to do? The iPhone that they have just announced, just as the latest iPad incorporates a LiDAR. A LiDAR allows you to scan at a very high resolution your physical environment. And they have already started introducing programs and apps that let you take advantage of the LiDAR mixing in the same uh, environment, physical and digital together. Today you are seeing it through the screen of your tablet or phone. But tomorrow, you will be able to experience the world as it mixes physical and digital components seamlessly. And these are already the first steps that we are seeing in that direction. So is Facebook going to rule the virtual reality environments of consumer and professional applications? Is Apple going to rule the augmented reality, mixed reality environments where physical and digital mesh, maybe there will be a newcomer. These two uh, technology giants are spending billions of dollars, but maybe as it happened in the past already, some new invention, some new innovation is going to really open the doors for massive adoption by billions of people of these exciting new frontiers. Thank you very much.